Hello folks, my name is Doug Patterson, the Senior Minister of Smithfield United Church of Christ, located in, as I always say, beautiful downtown Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And as we begin our worship service today, virtually, I want to say to you, may the peace of Christ be with you. Now I have a couple of announcements to make before we uh, continue. First of all is this video this week is going to be very abbreviated. It will not include some of the components that, some, that you have seen in the past. Uh, Susan is not going to uh, be offering up our prayers today because over the next several days I'm going to be on vacation with my family. So I have to tape these well ahead of time and uh, I, I know that you'll understand. Don't worry, when I get back we'll resume with our usual format. The other thing uh, I want to say to you is that this Sunday, which would be September the 5th, our worship time at the church is at 10 o'clock in the morning. However, the following Sunday, this is very important, the following Sunday, September the 12th, we're going to resume our regular worship hour at 11 o'clock in the morning. 11 o'clock on September 12th and every Sunday thereafter. This past Sunday, August the 29th, we were extremely privileged to have the opportunity to enter into the sacrament of holy baptism and also to uh, administer the uh, service of confirmation for a young man by the name of Brian Senkowitz. And I'm going to show you uh, some of that uh, part of our worship this past week because I know that you'll want to see it. Our congratulations to Brian and we certainly welcome him into the family of faith. So I want to ask you these questions. First of all, we're going to uh, engage in your baptism. The first question is this. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Do you commit yourself to, to the best of your ability to following in the ways of Jesus, his teachings, his example? Do you do that too? Yes. And will you uh, be, uh, what do I want to say, disciplined in your spiritual life so that you can grow your entire life? Will you do that too? Yes. Brian Andrew Sankowitz, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, for this young man, for his profession of faith. We pray that as he grows in body, he will also grow in spirit and mature in an understanding of you. We thank you for your Son, Jesus. We ask this in his name. Amen. Now, that was step one. Now we come to step two for the day. And it's about your confirmation. I know that for me to ask you if you want to confirm your baptism is kind of not applicable right now because we just did that. So let me ask you about this. Is it your desire to become a part of the church? And by the church, I mean the body of Christ. Not only here, but everywhere. And will you love and support the church with your prayers, with your presence, and that means physical presence, with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service? Will you do that? Yes. And will you support the other folks in the congregation and the body of Christ as together you grow in faith? Will you do that too? Yes. Let me ask all of you who are here, you may or may not be a member of this church, it's insignificant, because we're all here today as the body of Christ. You've heard Brian's profession and commitments. Will you love and support him 
Will you care for him? Will you pray for him? And will you be for him the body of Christ? If so, answer by saying, we will. We will. Let's pray. Well, God, this is a high holy moment in the life of any church, and indeed, it is today in ours. Once again, we ask your blessings upon Brian, his brothers, his mother, his father, we ask your blessings upon this entire family that together, as we once again confirm our faith in you, that you will give us courage and strength and fortitude. We thank you for Jesus. We ask this in his name. Amen. Now, before we give you certificates, I've asked John Colburn, the president of our congregation, to offer a few words of welcome. Since the handheld is around, up. This. I'm the cleft, is what I am. I have known you most of your life, and your parents. And I know, from what I know of you and your parents, you are here because you want to be here. I know you've got proud parents because you're here, but this is your choice in its entirety. And as a member of this congregation and president of this congregation, I just want to extend my personal welcome and the welcome of Smithfield United Church of Christ to you in your confirmation. And the baptism was a cool part of it. So thank you and welcome and bless you and bless your parents and bless us all, everyone. <laughs> Now, I should have pointed out earlier that uh, you're surrounded literally by your physical family. Rebecca, Ben, Sam, Eric is up here keeping, you're watching your back. Right? So, I want you now to, through your applause, to welcome Brian Sankowitz into the family of God. As most of you know, we are extremely blessed at Smithfield to have such outstanding music on a regular basis. This past Sunday, filling in for Jim Varner, who was on vacation, was Tino Cardenas. Tino is 16 years old and he is a fabulous musician. And we're so happy, I'm so happy, that he not only willingly, but enthusiastically uh, always agrees to participate in our worship through the sharing of his musical gift. So pay close attention now and enjoy as Tino plays this beautiful piece from Rachmaninoff.
Let me share with you today a few verses from the Old Testament from 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab with his officers and all Israel with him. They ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. It happened late one afternoon when David rose from his couch and was walking about on the roof of the king's house that he saw from the roof a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful. David sent someone to inquire about the woman. It was reported, This is Bathsheba, daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So David sent messages to get her. And she came to him, and he lay with her. And then she returned to her house. May God add his blessing to the reading and the hearing of this portion of his holy word. This is the word of the Lord. I want to talk to you for just a very few moments today about uh, war. As you are painfully aware, as am I, we recently ended our war in Afghanistan, the longest running war in United States history, 20 years. And when we left, we left without winning, if you want to use that terminology, or without much success. It cost us a lot of American lives, and it cost us over two trillion dollars. I can't begin to conceive of that number, the amount of money that we spend on war. Now, this has been in the news a big time over the last couple of weeks because we are leaving. But be honest, over these last 20 years, outside of the beginning of this conflict and the end of this conflict, how much time did you actually devote to reading about this war, to watching newscasts about this war? to considering it in any way, shape, or form. The fact of the matter is, most of us as Americans just got used to it, and we just started taking it for granted. It was so commonplace on the news and so forth that it was just, just a flyby for most of us. This is sad because war runs counter to Christian values. War runs counter to most values of most religious persuasions. People of faith, doesn't matter exactly what kind of faith you're, you're involved with, people of faith by and large all claim that we're against war and we wish for peace. But because we're so used to it, we've learned to use it to our advantage. I want to lift up for you today the story, at least the beginning of the story that I just read to you about, ba about David and Bathsheba. Now David, the most powerful man in the nation, uh, the king, he sent his troops off to war. Now, the thing that really intrigues me about this scripture lesson, it says this. It says, in the springtime, when kings usually go to war. Now, that just, that just really has an impact on me because what it says is this. Is that it's like, okay, the weather's turning good. Uh, men, saddle up the horses. Sharpen your swords. Get the chariots ready to go. It's time to go fight somebody, huh? Yeah, we're used to it. But David used this war, this battle, to cover up his own personal sins. He used the sins of the nation to cover up his own personal sins. 
which included this. One day he was at the top of uh, his palace and he glanced over the side and saw a woman bathing on a rooftop nearby. Her name was, was Bathsheba. And the Bible says that she was very beautiful and David desired her. And because he was the king and because he had power, believe me folks, nothing ever changes. It's always, always throughout history. It's always about money, sex, and power. Always. And he wanted her, so he sent his servants and said, bring her to me. And they did, and the Bible says he had relations with her, and she went back to her house, but later she reported to him and said, I've conceived, I'm pregnant. Now, as with all great sin, the uh, uh, thing that we always want to do is to cover that sin up somehow so that we don't get blamed for it. So Bathsheba's husband was named Uriah. He was an officer in the army. And so he was off to battle. See, So he sent for Uriah, hoping that Uriah would come home for a little furlough. And on his furlough, he would have relations with his wife. And therefore, when the baby was born, they could claim that it was Uriah's and not David's. But Uriah was a man of honor. Uriah was a man of great honor. And to keep himself ritually clean, ritually pure, he refused to have relations with Bathsheba. Now, when David learned about this, he covered it up even more, and he sent orders for Uriah to not only return to the battle, but to be sent to the front where his chances of survival were slim to none. And in fact, you see, Uriah was killed. So here we have a, a man of great power and in our Judeo-Christian heritage, a man of great influence, King David, uh, who sinned greatly and covered it up. This is what sin does. It expresses itself in personal ways and in corporate ways. And so as people of faith, as f people who, who follow Jesus, you and me for the most part, we have to consider these two things. What, what, is, my, what is my responsibility in conducting my life in a moral, ethical way? What is my responsibility? It requires daily checking. It requires daily discipline, if you will. And more importantly, perhaps, is our social, is our social uh, understanding of who we are in the world. And it, 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 is it really that we want to be known as warmongering people? You know, we always say that uh, Jesus is the Prince of Peace and that he is the culmination of all the prophecies that say that I'm gonna, there's not going to be any more war, that people will take, their, plow, they will take their, their, their spears and their swords and they will melt them down and they'll make plowshares, useful agricultural instruments out of them to actually help people instead of killing people to help people. What would happen today if we weren't spending trillions of money on war? What would happen? Well, we'd have more money and resources and we really knew what to do with. Imagine all the people that we could help. Imagine all the programs that we could put into place. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Now, this requires not only a change of an individual spirit, but the change of a national spirit. And that's a tough nut to crack. Believe me, that's a tough nut to crack. Understand this. Peace does not mean the absence of war. Peace means that you have no reason to go to war because you believe in justice and compassion and the value and the dignity of every human being. 
That's what I wanted to share with you today, my friends, is this, that in the words of the old spiritual, ain't gonna study war no more. And it is my hope and prayer that together we might pray for true peace in our spirits, in our nation, in our world. May that peace, the peace of Christ, be with you now. Amen.